Hello to you newcomers and welcome back my lovely subscribers. As Darth Vader said, this will be a day long remembered. That's because today I'll be showing you guys my full Battlefront 2 Clone Trooper Coruscant Guard Officer build. Today I'm going to be showing you guys exactly in what order I put the armor on as well as what it looks like when it's all on me and I'm in full build. This is the culmination of around 10 months of on and off work, so I'm very excited to show you guys what I've got. After this, I'm going to be applying for 501st. They're going to have to make a new uh, costume resource library since nobody has done the Battlefront 2 Coruscant Guard Officer yet. So it's probably going to take a while for you guys to hear an update on that, but I'll be sure and keep you guys in the loop and we'll have to throw a party or something whenever I get 501st approval. So let's jump right into it. First with me, I've got the belt that goes around my waist and connects to the thigh pieces. This is essentially the thing that keeps the whole lower body supported. So we're gonna make that nice and tight. It's got two buckles that dangle down and those are gonna snap in to the thigh pieces to hold them in place and hold them up pretty well. The thigh pieces, also have a dangling uh, a strap that will connect to the shins but first we're going to put on the knee pads they have a velcro pad that connects to that little black piece of velcro that you see on the front of the thigh that's to try and keep them from spinning around or moving too too far on me i might have to come up with a better solution because they still kind of move around a little bit but for now they work pretty well. So next is the shin pieces. Thankfully, these shin pieces have removable backs so that I can fit my like giant size 15 feet through them. I have to like spin them around the wrong way and then twist them once I've got my heel through them. So very thankful for that design. And like I said, those snap in to the dangling buckles from the thigh. They go behind the knee so the strapping shouldn't be visible. So after the thighs and knees and calves are in place, I'm gonna put the cod and butt piece on. And these guys are just held together with uh, Velcro straps. They connect to each other and just kind of hang there with gravity. After that, I'm gonna put the ab front and back pieces on. Those are also connected with Velcro and they just kind of sit there on top of the cod and butt piece. After I have these on, it's really uh, kind of impossible to bend over. So. I try and make sure I have all my armor within arm's reach and kind of at a sitting on a table level. So now with the abs, we are going to cover up the section between the ab and the groin plate with the belt. So we're going to grab our comma, use the magnets that we attach to it and snap it to the inside of the belt and then just slide the belt over our abs so that they cover the seam or the break between the abs and the cod piece. Once the belt is on, we'll slide on the final piece to the belt so that it's all connected. And we'll also attach the front ammo boxes as well as the straps that hang from the little buckle that hangs from the belt. We'll attach those to the comma. We can't forget the little DC-17 blaster that fits right into the holster. So that's the lower body. Let's move on to some of the upper body stuff. So for the upper body, we're gonna start with the back piece. Now the back piece also has part of the pauldron just velcroed onto it to keep it from moving too much. So that's what you see there. The back piece can kind of hang on my back for now due to the strapping on the shoulders. It keeps it in place enough for me to grab the front chest piece and snap it into place. The chest and the back piece are held together with Velcro with a little bit of a gap in between. I know that's not normal for most troopers, but that's how they look in Battlefront. Once we have the chest on, we're going to attach the front pauldron piece that's also held in place with Velcro so it doesn't move around too much. After that, we'll attach the shoulder bells and the biceps. Those are held together with a piece of a elastic band just to keep the biceps from sliding down my arm. Unfortunately, my biceps are not that huge, so they do want to slide down if they're not attached. So we'll buckle in the shoulders to the well, buckles that are hanging on from the back piece. After that, we can just slide on the elbow pads. Those are just kind of uh, held in place by elastic band. 
And before we put on the gauntlets, I'm going to figure out the side pieces of the pauldron. They are also uh, velcroed to the shoulder bells to keep them in place and to keep them from moving around too much. Once they're in place, I'm going to put my gloves on and be sure and to take off the, uh, the little hand pad. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to fit our hands through the gauntlets. That was a feature that I really liked. Just attached a bit of Velcro to the top of the gloves and to the back of the hand plates. That way, I can slide my hand in the gauntlets while wearing the gloves so I don't have to stuff the glove down in there. Once the gauntlets are on, we will grab our hand plates and just Velcro them onto the top of our hands. This is all coming together pretty well now. One of the last pieces is this little uh, strip of ammo boxes. I've got some Velcro attached to the pauldron, as well as a little piece attached to the side of the chest. So they're kind of just going to hang there for now. I need to attach the band that hangs from them to the inside of my belt, but I'll figure that out later. Okay, and finally, we've got the helmet. I'm going to turn on the fans on the inside so that I don't literally die of heat exhaustion inside that thing. And let's see how it looks. I think the head looks a little bit big, but I also have a pretty big head, so I'm okay with it. I know I'm going to need like a ribbed neck seal to cover up my neck. You can see peeking out under there, but that shouldn't be a problem. I'll just buy that. Overall, I'm really happy, like I am so happy with how the armor looks when it's all on. When I started this project 10 months ago, I wasn't even sure if I'd make it this far. I even took a picture of the first piece of armor that I 3D printed. You can check it out right now. It's part of the, uh, it's like the upper right of the chest area. So very happy with how it turned out. So now, like I said, begins the long process of building out a 501st CRL, getting it all approved in the first place. It's gonna be a while before I have any real news for you guys, but I'm gonna keep at it. This has been like a life long dream of mine ever since I really played the original Battlefront 2. So I am going to get there. It's just a matter of time. I want to thank you guys for your continued support. The Clone Trooper build videos have been some of my favorite to make and I think they've been some of your favorite. So I want to thank you guys for all your support. Let me know in the comments what you want my next big project to be. I'm really torn right now between a few different ideas like the Death Trooper, the Sith Trooper, maybe a different clone would be fun. I don't know. Right now, I'm open to just about anything. So let me know what you want to see in the comments. But thank you guys for watching. And as always, I hope to see you again in the next video.